Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the value of branding. I want to give everybody a heads up uh, that this is not just a presentation. This is a conversation. So feel free to post any questions or comments to YouTube or tweet at us directly at RPS123Shoot is our handle. Uh, and if you're listening after the live broadcast, uh, still ask us questions. Uh, we'll follow up with any comments that are posted. All right. For those of you who don't know who we are, um, I'm Amanda Sutt, and I am the creative director here at Rock, Paper, Scissors. Uh, and we are a branding and marketing firm. Uh, we have been in the business for 30 years, so we have seen a lot of change and also done a lot of changing ourselves uh, to keep up with the time. Uh, we focus on our clients' brands, uh, not just logos and marketing collateral, but the entire experience, uh, which is the focus of today's conversation. So let's let's start this conversation about the value of branding with an example uh, that most of us encounter on a regular basis. Uh, when you go to a restaurant, you might ask for a soda, if you're in the Midwest, a pop, or here in Georgia, a Coke, uh, and you run into this situation. People don't just recognize your logo or product, they start asking for it by name and feel very strongly about it. Uh, there is a real turf war out there between Pepsi and Coke uh, with some really fierce brand loyalty going on here. Both Coke and Pepsi have invested a lot in their branding uh, and have actually built software empires around this. Uh, some other great examples are Kleenex, Q-tips, uh, and a few years ago, Xerox. Um, there are all um, some other brands that take recognition to the next level because we call the good by the brand name. You don't ask for a cotton swab, you ask for a Q-tip. Uh, the brand has become the product. Uh, now, not everyone can have a brand of this magnitude, uh, but I wanna help everybody kind of think about how, what the impact branding can have on our culture. Um, but you can have a brand that does have impact, and so we wanna talk a little bit about that today. So let's back up a bit and start with the definition of branding. Uh, a brand is more than a logo, a tagline, and a color scheme. A brand, it, what it really comes down to, it's a manifestation of a business or organization's beliefs and values uh, shown through its products and services, experiences, and interactions. Uh, it's how the audience connects to the business or organization and what they think and feel as they experience the brand firsthand. So it does a lot. Um, branding is also what differenti differentiates you from the competition, uh, which can breed loyal customers uh, and also allows you to charge more for your products and services. So now that we've established what the brand is, we can dive into the value it has. So how do you define the value of a brand? Seth Godin has a great definition uh, that I like to start with. Uh, a brand's value is merely the sum total of how much extra people will pay or how often they choose the expectation, memories, stories, and relationships of one brand over the alternative. I really love this quote because there, there's a lot in it because there is a lot in branding. Um, and we could talk about all the different levels of the value that's in branding. Uh, but today I wanna focus on the relationship aspect of branding, um, and, which goes deeper than just the financial side of it when we talk about the value. So, it's pretty easy if you want to find an article out there about the value of branding, easily Google it and find tons of them. Um, and they'll tell you about how much this brand is worth and the value of that. Um, but we wanna look at branding from a different perspective. We actually wanna look at branding, um, we wanna look at the value of your brand as it's perceived from the people who encounter it and the relationship they have created uh, that is the value in it. So today we're gonna to focus on the perspective of your customer, um, the owner, and even the employee. 
So most conversations about branding focus on the customer impact. So we're going to start here um, and how the relationship you build with them increases the value of your brand. So the foundation of all relationships is trust, and you hear this all the time. Uh, and there is no different, uh, no difference between companies and the, and that relationship with their consumers. Having a consistent brand helps build this trust. Uh, but the trust is built from more than just consistency. Uh, consumers are more likely to trust a business that is invested in their brand. It comes from the idea that if the business took the time to invest in themselves and think things through, uh, they would have put that same care in the product and services they offer. So it's a very um, subjective level, uh, but very important. And the short of it is companies that invest in their brands uh, are easier for consumers to trust. And this trust adds value to the brand because companies don't have to keep winning customers over and over. So that's a very critical part to that. Let's look at an example of trust through consistency. Uh, your brand, think of your brand as your company's uniform. Uh, you're showing up the same way, uh, makes you more familiar and therefore more trustworthy. So let's start with a little bit of a less obvious example of branding, uh, but it's still something that once we talk about it, you're gonna think about it. So when I say banker, what image comes to mind? I'll give you a second. Usually it's somebody in a suit. The way bankers dress is a part of the brand of the industry, not just a specific branch. To reinforce this idea of trust, what would you think if you walked into a bank as a consumer and the bankers were wearing t-shirts and shorts? Would you trust them as much? So if you have that inconsistency in your brand, the perception of your brand starts to break the trust with your customer, which weakens your relationship and starts to diminish the value of your brand. So looking at both sides, both the positive of what the brand can add, and then by not having it, what you start to lose. So it, the complement to consistency is recognition. Uh, brand recognition with customers uh, builds a sense of familiarity. Uh, you have a second to connect, and if people recognize your brand, you have a greater chance of getting their attention. And over time, this familiarity brings a sense of ownership in your customers, uh, and nothing really beats this level of loyalty uh, when building a brand value. Um, and so that recognition really helps build, it goes back to that trust. Um, and they feel that the product is gonna have that consistency as well. So an example of, of this idea is a home away from home. Uh, McDonald's uh, is a great example of brand recognition and familiarity. Uh, so what do you think about when you see McDonald's when you're traveling? Uh, in an uncertain situation while on the road or even in a different country, uh, this brand could can create a sense of comfort uh, because it's something recognizable. Uh, even if you don't eat there all the time, there's those golden archers, uh, things that you can think about. It's like, you know what? That burger is going to taste pretty similar, if not exactly the same as it does back home. Uh, and then on the other side, they're more than likely also going to have clean restrooms. So those are things that become really important when you're on the road, and that recognition um, really helps that customer. Um, come back to this organization time and time again. So it continues to add value to that customer, which add value to the whole brand. Um, for the customer, uh, there is value in this relationship in addition to the product and service offered, and that's really what it comes down to. All right, so enough about the customer. Uh, let's switch gears and talk about the business owner. Uh, branding can have a tremendous value for the business owner. A solid brand offers uh, so much more to a company's leadership than just money. Uh, and this is something we don't always talk about. Uh, but <laughs> that being said, let's start by talking about some money. Um, the obvious value to the brand for the owner is the monetary. Having a solid brand can allow you to charge a premium because there is more value felt by the customer 
them by a similar product and they're therefore willing to pay more. So there is a part of branding value that we can very easily measure. Just go to the grocery store and look at whatever section you're in and you will see tons of different options. Um, and the more expensive ones are typically brands that people relate to and trust. Okay, so there, there's also a more subjective value, a uh, valuable benefit um, to the owner. And this is direction um, that defines, uh, helps define the brands that have been created. When you know who you are as a brand, you also gives you a chance to know who you are not. Uh, and this can make business decisions a lot easier. It makes saying yes and no more streamlined because the opportunity presented or challenge either adds value to the brand or it doesn't. So it helps keep everybody on the same path. Uh, this directional benefit could also help a business be more scalable uh, because the shared value and vision in the brand makes the business not just reliant on specific personalities, but a whole culture that can grow out of it. So in addition to, in addition to being, uh, talking about scalable, uh, let's talk about uh, building brand ambassadors. Uh, and this can come from in the form of celebrity endorsements like good old Terry Crews and Old Spice. Uh, but there, uh, the more opportunity that can be even more powerful is customers spreading the word about your brand without you having to pay for all the advertising. Uh, and this happens when you have an easy message and story to share. Um, great examples of this are like Tom's and buying not just shoes for you but for other people. Um, though there's some controversy in some products right now, Uber was spread initially mainly by word of mouth and that's where they got a huge amount of their recognition. So uh, this is just another aspect of building a brand loyalty which can add exponential value uh, to the brand. All right, the employee's perspective uh, of the value of branding is one that's often overlooked, but this segment is what typ typically separates good companies from great companies. So similar to the direction good branding can help owners with decision, this direction also helps employees know who they are in the company, how they fit into it, and where they're going. Uh, this idea is felt when you walk into a business and the staff has a sense of purpose and confidence uh, and can handle any situation uh, without owners usually. Uh, they can make, just make things happen. Um, and these employees are usually happy in their job. Uh, and there's a level of satisfaction that employees get from their job that is more than just a paycheck. Um, in addition to creating a better culture, this also leads to less turnover, uh, which is great for everyone involved. So there's a sense of ownership that people can take because they understand their position and the direction they're going. Um, so there's a whole other level than just that paycheck that they take home. And a great example of this is Chick-fil-A. Um, you walk into a Chick-fil-A and they have hired a whole bunch of teenager, teenagers just like um, all those other fast food chains out there. But next time you walk into a Chick-fil-A, notice the authority and support you get as a customer compared to other similar companies. Uh, this is part of their brand. Um, and the brand in regards to their staff is more than just a logo and a uniform. It's an attitude as well. And this direction definitely improves that customer experience. Um, so it adds value to the customer. Uh, but it also gives those employees this great sense of, of of belonging. And also having that consistent solid brand for your employees can create a sense of, of belonging. And these employees go from individuals to a cohesive team. Because they have something to belong to, it gives them common ground to stand on. Um, and it's something that as, as humans we desire. Um, and so that's an important part that um, that is created out of out of your brand, uh, which then becomes becomes your culture. 
So that just about wraps it up for us for right now. The value in brand is more than just monetary. Um, and when you start to look at the players in the game, um, money does still change hands, but more happens uh, than, than just a transaction. Branding takes, um, takes into account all the other parts uh, in between the transactions to create an experience that stick with people and builds a relationship that adds value. Um, so looking at that relationship and what that really can do um, is just as important as seeing uh, how much you can charge. Um, so I'm going to open this up to questions, and we got we received some questions ahead of time that I'm going to start with. Um, so feel free to uh, push questions to us as you're um, as you're listening, or if anything else comes up. So first up, uh, any suggestions on how a new business can show customers the value of their brand and build brand ambassadors when they don't have a proven track record? This is easy, actually. Uh, you, it, it, the brand ambassador comes from creating an extraordinary experience for that customer that they can't wait to tell somebody about it. Now, there's two sides to this. You can have an extraordinarily positive experience that they tell everybody about. You can also have a very negative experience that they start to spread and talk about as well. Um, the brand ambassadors are built one person at a time. Uh, the whole idea is that they become a sneezer, uh, which is a Seth Godin term, um, where you have one person who sneezes and spreads the word to multiple people. So uh, you become a little bit more exponential by, by treating one customer really well and having them have such a great time, or bad time, <laughs> that they tell everybody about it. So. All right, uh, another question. Can you give me an example of how good branding helps give business owners direction in what to lead? Oh, I love this, actually. Um, I, as I, I work with um, lots of clients looking at, uh, who get all these emails every day about, try this marketing platform or you know, advertise with us. And um, it can be really overwhelming and it can also create a sense of anxiety because, you know, am I missing out on something? Should I be doing this? You know, is that where my next big break is going to go? Um, and when you understand who your brand is and who your audience is and who you're connecting with, you can quickly look at all these promotions and offers and go, you know what, that's not going to reach my audience, or that's not the quality that matches my brand, I'm going to pass on that, or this is perfect, this seems like a good fit for our culture, our customers, and our brand. So having that sense of identity helps make those decisions, uh, for instance, with with marketing opportunities that come, get thrown at you, um, because it, it, can be, it can be pretty extreme. So, all right, uh, what rebranding or would rebranding my business fall under the lines of inconsistency if we're going for a completely different look and we feel trying to improve our image and thus negatively affecting our brand? Um, inconsistency and rebranding are two totally different things. If you're rebranding, you are going to launch a new brand that is going to be consistent. And you're going to probably talk about either why you've rebranded or completely focus on why you've re on the new rebrand. We're actually going to do a whole, this is a great question actually, we're going to do a whole segment on uh, why to rebrand and what you should do uh, in this coming year. There are a um, there are only a handful of reasons why you should consider a rebrand, um, and I'm actually very picky about this when talking to, to clients. Um, every once in a while, if you have not been maintaining your brand um, and it gets really outdated, you're going to need something to show that you're still relevant and consistent. I prefer to not do that. I'd rather adjust and modify a brand on an ongoing basis um, so that it has, it always feels fresh and relevant. Um, but other reasons to rebrand are mergers because you have a new culture and a new change. Um, and and the, the least fun reason is because um, of bad blood and you really need to show that you're a different company. Um, uh, BP is a great example of when they redid their logo uh, probably about 10 years ago now because uh, they wanted to not uh, that was a shift because they didn't want to just be British Petroleum um, and they wanted to make sure that they had that look and feel that felt fresh. Um, okay. 
Um, last, last one I have, unless something else comes in, is you mentioned how branding allows you to change, charge a premium for your services, but isn't there also value in positioning yourself as a brand that's better value for your customers' dollars? That's fantastic. Um, not every brand is going to charge a premium. Um, and that could be part of your branding. I think Target and uh, Walmart are really good examples of this. Um, ironically, sometimes you will find cheaper um, <laughs> stuff at Target, but I, uh, Walmart's whole brand and perspective is that um, more for less. And so part of their brand is not to charge a premium, but they have other strategies with their brand where you're going to buy less per piece, but you're going to do all of your shopping there. It's one of the reasons that they added things like grocery stores um, so that they can keep that that uh, per item price down to really serve their market um, and then just offer, you'll buy more things so that they can, on the whole ticket, get more. Um, and then the flip side of that would be Target, who um, does does sometimes charge more, but they're more focused on that whole experience. So you have to decide what's your um, spin on your on the value that you're adding to your brand. So Walmart's selling themselves as the uh, price competitor, and Target is selling themselves as an experience. Um, and that's not one where the the premium value comes in, um, but there are other, because that's a choice, a conscious choice of their brand, but there are brands that will allow you to charge more. Um, think about going to the grocery store and buying, uh, you know, Heinz ketchup over the store brand. Uh, they can charge more because they're Heinz and it's a trusted value, whereas the um, store brand is going to be your more economical choice and that's part of their brand that's part of their position and that's part of their conscious choices to be there all right um so if you guys have any more questions feel free to post them uh there's also more content on our website at 123shoot.com uh, and feel free to reach out to us uh, we'll be launching a couple more webinars for the rest of the year uh, but look forward to what we have lined up for 2017. thanks guys